Good morning and happy Halloween. I want to remind you again to turn your clocks back tonight. If you don't, you're going to be real early, early for worship tomorrow at 9 o'clock. I want you to think this morning about the uh, term eagerly await, the term or phrase eagerly await. You know, two things that I, uh, I can't wait to get behind us is one, this election, and two, can't wait for us to get a vaccine where we can quit worrying about this virus. You know, the main reason that uh, I want to get those things behind us is because I can't stand to hear about either one of them on the television anymore. But when I was a child, I eagerly awaited for Christmas and the end of the school year every year. When I got to college, I wanted to graduate, get my commission, and go on active duty in the Army. When I got married, when I got engaged, I couldn't wait to get married. Kitty and I, I think, moved the date up twice. When we got pregnant, I couldn't wait for her children to get here. It just didn't happen fast enough for me. I love to plan vacations, plan a big vacation. You know, for years, we took vacations with the Elliots and the Warrens and the Donigans, and we still do that, and planning a big vacation is fun because you get to make the plans and you anticipate and you wait on it coming because it's, you know it's going to be such a good thing. But what about our next phase in life when this life is done? You know, this virus that we have has, has made all of us probably think about that. It's made a lot of people get really scared about that, and our, and our politicians are always talking about it. You know? But I want us to listen to what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 20, and, and I'm going to read through chapter 4, verse 1. Paul says that we should eagerly wait on our Savior. Verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that we will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I believe that Paul is telling us that we need to stand firm in the Lord by eagerly anticipating his coming, desiring that, being excited about that, planning for that. I hope you have a good day. Be safe. Stay well out there.